We have reached the top of the hour, so we'll get started now. Um, good morning. I'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their busy day to attend today's presentation on the use of GeoWeb GeoCells in landfills. I'm your host, Corey Schneider, Business Development Manager with Presto Geosystems. I've been with Presto for 14 years and specialize in technical and site support. So I have significant experience in all of the products and applications we'll be discussing today. We are located in Wisconsin and manufacture erosion control, stormwater management, and porous pavement products that are used all over the US and the world. I have everyone muted now. So if you do have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the question window and I will answer them at the end. Here are, the, here are the things I hope you get out of today's presentation. We'll cover geocells in general from development to applications, Presto's unique accessories that lead to stronger, faster installations, and then landfill specific applications. Presto worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to develop geocell technology back in the late 1970s, and we have been innovating ever since. And we do pride ourselves in going beyond simply manufacturing and selling a product. Um, if you go to our website, which is prestogeo.com, you'll find that we have a lot of design and construction resources available. We also have experienced engineers on staff, and uh, what they spend most of their days doing is uh, free project evaluations. So you can go to our website, fill out a short form, and then our engineers can recommend the exact cell size and cell depth, as well as anchoring pattern to make sure that you have a successful project. Um, we do sell through distribution, so we have local support available. And um, Especially if we have an inexperienced contractor, we can certainly provide on-site um, installation assistance at no cost, and that would be done with either an experienced distributor or someone from Presto. We operate in three product categories, um, soil stabilization using our GeoWeb GeoCells, and GeoWeb can be used for basically four main application areas, uh, load support, slope and channel protection, as well as building green retaining walls. Uh, we also have a line of porous pavements, both vegetated and aggregate options. And then we have lightweight reusable construction mats available as well. So today we're gonna focus on the GeoWeb solutions as they pertain to landfills. But if you do have any interest in the mats or the porous pavements, you can find that information on our website and or uh, reach out to me directly. We'll now move on to discuss our soil stabilization capabilities using the GeoWeb cellular confinement system in general terms and then as they relate to landfills. As I mentioned, we worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to develop geocell technologies. Uh, the Corps was looking for ways to make beach landings easier. Um, getting heavy military equipment through loose, loose beach sand was problematic. So the Corps knew they wanted to try to confine that sand somehow. And they tried to make confinement systems out of aluminum, cardboard, um, wax paper and various other materials. Um, Presto is already an existing plastics manufacturer, so they reached out to us and we were able to develop the technology to ultrasonically weld strips of high density polyethylene together. And that ended up being the chosen material due to its lightweight, flexible nature and the fact that it is inert to nearly all chemical and climate conditions. So once it is installed in the ground, it is going to be there for a long time. Uh, we've done accelerated lab tests that show that it does not even begin to break down for over 100 years. The GeoWeb system consists of two main attributes, uh, cell size and cell depth. The cells come in three diameters. 
Um, so our small cell is our 20 V with each opening be, being about eight by nine inches. The mid-sized cell or 30 V has an about, about a 11 by 12 inch opening. And then our large cell or 40 V has an 18 by 20 inch opening. Each one of those cell sizes can come in three, four, six, eight, and 12 inch depths. So the cell aperture and height are selected following an evaluation of project specific needs and site conditions. And what our engineers will always do is uh, recommend the lowest cost combination of cell size and cell depth that will still be successful for your project. The ultrasonically welded seam where all the connecting points are is very important to the function of a geocell. The stronger the seam strength, the better the performance of the geocell. And a strong seam allows for heavier infill material, steeper and taller slopes, and better lifetime performance. GeoWeb is produced using high quality virgin high density polyethylene resin for consistently strong welds at cell junctions, while also maintaining semi-rigid ductile properties within the cell walls, high stress crack resistance, and overall toughness and long-term durability in the environment. Our geocells do not use fillers or exotic polymer alloy blends, which can ultimately reduce weld strength and environmental stress crack resistance, and that are offered in some competing products in the name of increasing cell wall stiffness. To avoid weld failures and the damaging effects of differential settlement, uniformity in performance across all elements of a geocell system is much more important than stiffness alone. So the table on the right is only a very general representation for summary purposes, but it just shows you the cell size and cell depth combination that we'll use for some typical applications. Uh, we do highly recommend that you utilize our free project evaluation service uh, whenever possible. So again, we will recommend the most effective or the most cost effective cell size and cell depth combination that will still lead to success. There are three main infill types for any GeoWeb application, depending on the type of protection needed. Topsoil, aggregates and granular soils, and concrete. In most cases, GeoCells allow for the use of on-site materials without the need to import fill generally with the only limiting factors being that the material should be angular and the maximum particle size should be about one third the cell depth. Here we can see how the material ships. It is tri-folded, banded, and palletized, making it very compact, which leads to relatively low freight costs. The material is lightweight, so no heavy equipment is needed for the installation. The nominal width for each section is eight and a half feet, but you can overstretch them to make them longer and skinnier or understretch them to make them shorter and wider. But we do want to keep that width dimension between seven and a half and 9.3 feet. Uh, the length will depend on the amount of expansion as well as the number of strips weld to, welded together and the cell size. In order for a geocell system to perform uniformly, it is critical that both the factory welded junctions or internal junctions and the field join junctions that connect ind individual panels or the mechanical junctions perform at a level that is commensurate with that of the cell walls. The three primary elements of any geocell system, cell walls, internal junctions, and connectors must perform uniformly as a complete system. Therefore, an incremental improvement in one characteristic is only valuable if a complementary improvement has been made in the other components of the system. As I mentioned, GeoWeb is manufactured with a proprietary blend of high quality virgin high density polyethylene. And our proprietary formulation has stood the test of time for more than 40 years and contains no fillers or unstable polymer combinations. For most typical sites, GeoWeb will, will retain its durability, 
and I mentioned that it will last for over 100 years. We stand behind our numbers so that you can deliver certainty in the solution as you build with materials that you trust. Presto's GeoWeb is equipped with numerous design and construction components that increase strength and speed of installation. We have a variety of staking options. The standard method is to use our Atra stake clip, which you see in the upper left-hand part of the photo here. And those are going to fit on top of a half inch diameter or number four rebar. But if we do have long-term corrosion concerns, we can provide either fiberglass reinforced or plastic stakes, but those will be a little bit more expensive, so are generally only reserved for uh, special applications. Atra keys are the mechanical connection that I mentioned in the previous slides. Not only do Atra keys provide the uniformity we discussed, but they are made of the same HDPE material as the GeoWeb itself, so they will last just as long. Beware of manufacturers that recommend staples or nylon cable ties, as these do not have the same long-term durability as high-density polyethylene. The tendon and atra tendon clip system is ideal for anchoring the GeoWeb on slopes without the need for stakes, which could penetrate the liners that are used on most landfills. The tendons are tied to either earth anchors or a dead man pipe, which can typically be buried in the same trench as the liner at the crest of the slope. Now we'll go into a little more in depth on each of the landfill relevant application areas, starting with load support. GeoWeb can be used for both uh, surface stabilization of unpaved roads and base stabilization below pavements. Um, many solid waste facilities must contend with maintaining unpaved access roads. Not only can GeoWeb save money up front by allowing you to reduce your overall cross section, but incorporating GeoWeb into the roadway section can also help minimize or reduce annual costs associated with repair and maintenance of unpaved landfill roads that can take a beating from heavy equipment and truck traffic. Generally speaking, the benefits of using GeoWeb in load support applications are a reduction of your aggregate cross section by 70% or more, the GeoWeb will also control lateral and vertical infill movement, which prevents shearing, and it will create a stiff base with a high flexural strength. Here's how the three-dimensional GeoWeb system works. When a vertical load is applied, the active earth pressure in the loaded cell pushes back against the passive earth pressure in the adjacent cell to form a stable system. Each cell helps to support the ones around it. The GeoWeb cell walls also transfer hoop stress, which is important in keeping the system intact and creates a mattress effect. The strength of the seams around each cell, the material properties of the individual strips, and the connection method between panels are all important factors in determining how the GeoCell system can improve site conditions. Strong seams, semi-ductal resin properties, and integrated connections are critical to a well-performing system. The GeoWeb system and accessories are specifically designed to work together to be an effective solution for roads in soft soil locations. Here we can see the stresses on the subgrade with the unsupported subgrade on the left and the GeoWeb reinforced subgrade on the right. Notice how there is a complete elimination of the highest stresses at the surface with GeoWeb reinforcement. The stresses are reduced and distributed over a wider area known as the mattress effect. This effect reduces uh, stress reaching the subgrade and leads to a significant decrease in deflection and rutting. I want to quickly review a little bit of the research that we've done in the past to help to increase your confidence in the use of GeoWeb. Um, so this first test is a static load test where we had one meter of peat with a 700% moisture content. And over that, we placed eight inches of aggregate unconfined and compared it to eight inches confined in the GeoWeb. 
Settlement plates were placed throughout the GeoWeb section prior to its placement, and a load beam was placed over the GeoWeb section and loaded to failure. So the peat pit, peat pit test showed that bases reinforced with GeoWeb provide a significant improvement over unreinforced soils. We can see here that uh, with GeoWeb in the section, we had a four inch rut with this given static load, which might seem like a lot until you compare it to the 20 inch rut that occurred when the GeoWeb was not in the section. So since the previous test was static loads, we also went ahead and performed, performed some dynamic load testing. So again, we're comparing eight inches of unconfined aggregate to eight inches confined in the GeoWeb. And in this case, we applied a load repeatedly until we had six tenths of an inch of deformation, which was assumed to lead to failure of the pavement system. So we see that without GeoWeb in the section, this took about 25,000 load cycles. By adding GeoWeb, we go all the way up to 400,000 load cycles, which is a 16 times improvement in the number of load cycles for the very same deformation. Here we can notice the amazing strength of GeoWeb. It is strong enough to support fully loaded dump trucks uh, that back right up to the edge of where the cells are filled. This project is a good example of how GeoWeb can provide cost savings. So rather than importing expensive aggregate, the on-site silty sand material was used as the fill with only a two inch wearing course of imported aggregate re required. We were also able to reduce the overall section from 36 inches to just eight inches. So as you can imagine, that led to significant cost savings. And as mentioned previously, through that confinement, we're basically going to eliminate any maintenance that might need to be done to these unpaved roads. So a typical unpaved road section is going to have a geotextile below the geoweb panels. And this could be anything from a six ounce non-woven all the way up to an enhanced woven geotextile, depending on your subgrade and your maximum loads. But the uh, geotextile recommendation is also something that will, would be included in our project evaluation. So the GeoWeb then is uh, infilled with granular material and we do recommend starting out with a two inch wearing surface over the web. And typically once you uh, compact that angular material, you'll be down to about one inch over the top. Now we'll look at a few examples. Here's a project where Geo, GeoWeb allowed a structurally sound road to be built with clean stone infill. Without the GeoWeb, that stone would move with even one vehicle pass. And the combination of the clean stone and the GeoWeb perforations combined allowed for this uh, road through a wetland to be permitted because water can flow through the cross section, both vertically and laterally, and we are not interrupting the hydraulics of the wetland itself. Keep in mind, you get infiltration with clean stone infill only. The permeability of your infill is going to be your limiting factor. So on this particular project, um, rather than doing another paved section for their uh, yard, High Steel in Pennsylvania elected to use eight inch GeoWeb and an aggregate that had about 40% void space. So this allowed them to store three and a quarter inches of stormwater right in their pavement section, eliminating the need for additional stormwater infrastructure. You can also see the extremely heavy loads that are able to be handled by the GeoWeb system. Sometimes referred to as the cash registers for waste disposal, truck scales are important to just about every landfill and can also be supported using the GeoWeb cellular confinement system. The example shown here is actually a railroad scale. However, the same principles apply for truck scales. By distributing loads laterally, GeoWeb will control settlement, making scales more accurate, reducing scale maintenance, and allowing for longer functional life. 
One of the biggest questions that we get is about cost, especially if this is a new technology to you or your area. Having an idea of how much the GeoWeb system costs compared with other stabilization techniques is very important. So here we just took a single case and um, analyzed it. So we have uh, CBR values of the subgrade of just 0.5%, HS25 loading, we assumed $18 a ton for the aggregate infill and $5 a cubic yard for excavation. So we can see the first section on the left-hand side is using no geosynthetics, and that's going to require about 36 inches of a pavement section and cost about $41 a square yard using the uh, given inputs. By adding a geotextile and geogrid to the section, you'll, you'll be able to reduce the depth to about 26 inches, but your cost is still going to be right around $40 a square yard. We move over to the GeoWeb sections, both of which are going to be 14 or 15 inches deep. Um, if we are having to import material, that GeoWeb section is still going to uh, cost only $30 a yard, again, compared to 40 for the first two sections. And then if we do have suitable on-site material that we can use, our cost is all the way down to $20 a yard, so a 50% savings compared to the unreinforced section. We'll now move on to discuss how GeoWeb can be used in stormwater conveyance, critical components to any landfill design. Open channel designs with the GeoWeb system offer a more economical solution than riprap, gabions, or reinforced concrete, systems that are expensive and hard to place and maintain. The cellular network creates a system of check dams that protects the upper, upper soil or aggregate layer from hydrological erosive forces that impact unconfined materials. They are much more effective than two-dimensional solutions such as turf reinforcement mats or erosion control blankets that can be subject to undermining. The benefits of using GeoWeb in channels is that it will improve the hydraulic performance of whatever infill material you use. With vegetation, we will promote infiltration and reduce runoff. With an aggregate infill, we can allow for the use of smaller, less expensive rock. And then with concrete infill, no other form or reinforcement is required. The system will flex with subgrade deformation to minimize cracking. And we can also reduce your concrete thickness, le leading to additional savings. Cell size, depth, anchorage, and infill type are determined based on channel geometry and hydraulic conditions. <coughs> As mentioned earlier, free project evaluations are available on all projects, regardless of size. A cross-section like you see here, as well as calculations, are provided with every evaluation. Now we'll, we will look at how GeoWeb works with the various infill options, starting with topsoil and vegetation. Generally speaking, low-flow channels like stormwater containment facilities and stormwater channels can be armored with topsoil topsoil filled GeoWeb and covered with an erosion control blanket. But even in high flow situations, we have a solution that can allow you to protect channels from erosion and maintenance with the aesthetics of vegetation. And this solution involves topsoil filled cells covered with a turf reinforcement mat or TRM, which can offer a less expensive, lower maintenance green solution when compared to riprap. We tested the vegetated GeoWeb covered with a mid-grade turf reinforcement mat and received pretty impressive results. Uh, the 
topsoil filled GeoWeb was able to withstand 29 feet per second and 16 pounds of shear, more than twice the hydraulic resistance of 12 inch riprap, and about double the performance of a high performance TRM alone. The system works so well together because the TRM provides cover for the GeoWeb so that it does not scour out. While the GeoWeb is going to confine the soil below the TRM, so that the system won't fail when saturated, which is how turf reinforcement mats usually fail. In an unvegetated condition, GeoWeb has, is shown to improve the hydraulic performance of a turf reinforcement mat alone by 50%. Typical application for this system include roadside ditches, spillways, channel embankments or dam and pond overflow systems, really anywhere that you have very high velocities, but for relatively short duration. You can maintain the vegetation in the areas that would have previously been concrete or very large riprap. We also can provide an aggregate filled solution. Generally aggregate is used in arid regions where vegetation is difficult to establish or for areas that are typically underwater. So again, we uh, went out to Colorado State University and tested our aggregate solution. In this case, we ran a total of 90 tests using three different cell types and two different rock sizes. So with all of those data points, CSU was able to run a regression analysis and create this regression equation for us. So given the bed slope and unit discharge of any channel, we can manipulate the median rock size and the cell area to get, get us to a point where our rock loss is zero. And when we compare our rock sizing tool to the traditional riprap sizing tools of Abson Johnson and the Corps of Engineers, we find that through confinement, we're able to reduce that rock size anywhere from two to 10 times, which can lead to significant savings in your rock cost, as well as your transportation and installation costs. So the large variance in the rock reduction is due to the bed slope. The flatter the bed slope, the greater we are going to be able to reduce your rock size. And finally, for your most challenging applications, concrete filled GeoWeb. So with the GeoWeb, uh, the installation is really quite simple. All you have to do is anchor the panels to the channel slopes and the bottom, and then the concrete can be poured or pumped right into the cells, again, with no additional forms or reinforcement. And it does typically allow for easier to place higher slump concrete. It's a flexible system that can withstand settlement very well, which is of course important in landfill applications. It will also assure a uniform concrete depth, and we can generally replace five to six inch depth reinforced concrete with just three inches of concrete in the GeoWeb panels. So again, once the panels are anchored in the channel, the GeoWeb allows the concrete to be pumped or poured right into the cells. Concrete is then screeded and finished to the very top of the cell walls. Notice on the right-hand photo, the flexibility of the concrete-filled GeoWeb panel is on display. So due to all of the joints that are created by the cell walls, the concrete-filled GeoWeb panels won't crack like poured-in-place concrete generally does. So again, this system was tested at Colorado State with very impressive results. It was able to withstand 36 feet per second and 21 pounds of shear. And to our knowledge, it is the only product that was tested at the outdoor flume at Colorado State that uh, did not fail, but rather maxed out the flume. Now to a few examples. Here's a regional municipality of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. 
and they faced the challenge of creating an effective yet simple method for erosion prevention while removing stormwater from their newly capped cell at the Cambridge landfill. The protection system had to be durable and stable under a variety of hydraulic and mechanical stresses. Concrete filled four inch deep geoweb panels were selected due to previous in-ground success with the system, the ability of the concrete to limit vegetation growth in the bottom of the channel and the overall flexibility of the system to conform to potential subgrade movement. A total of 15,000 square feet of GeoWeb was installed at the landfill and the system was anchored with stakes in channels varying from seven to 20 feet wide with bed slopes up to 14 and a half percent. The perforated GeoWeb system maximizes the mechanical bond between the concrete and cell walls, locking the concrete infill into the individual cells of the system. The concrete filled system forms a uniform thickness mat, which controls concrete quantities and costs. The system prevents uncontrolled cracking of the concrete and reduces the chances of piping or undermining. Next up is a project that we did at a landfill in Hong Kong. So some interesting stats on this. It was a 460 foot drop from top to bottom with a design flow rate of 350 cubic feet per second. They also expected math maximum differential settlement to be over 30 feet within the first 15 years. Here we can see the location of the baffle blocks that were added as energy dissipators in both cross section and longitudinal section. The blocks were placed in the channel invert as well as on the side slopes approximately every eight feet downstream. Now we'll take a closer look at the installation. Here are the X's on the geotextile underlayment mark the location of the energy dissipator blocks. The GeoWeb was then placed and cut at the uh, block locations to make room for the energy dissipators. Next, the blocks weighing about 500 pounds each were placed. It's difficult to see here, but the blocks are tapered from bottom to top. This way, when the concrete is poured into the cells, the blocks are locked into place. Finally, the concrete was poured with some of the slopes being in excess of 20%. Note the change in infill type with concrete on the bottom and up the sides, transitioning to topsoil and vegetation at the crest and on the back side of the berms. With the GeoWeb system, transitioning to different infills to handle various hydraulic conditions is quite simple. The channels drain not only the top of the landfill, but also drain across the landfill through flexible piping buried a few feet below grade. Finally, we move to slope protection. GeoWeb is a state approved product for use in landfill capping applications. As of May 2020, GeoWeb was recently added to the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality Guidelines for addressing pre-regulatory landfills as an approved technology for use in soil cover systems. It's also approved in many other states. Uh, North Carolina was just the latest one to approve it. As mentioned earlier, tendons and atratendon clips allow for anchorage without penetrating geomembranes. Tendons are either tied to buried dead man pipe or earth anchors, and the entire system is draped from the crest, with the clips serving to distribute the load so as to not overstress any of the welds. The number and type of tendons, we have uh, Kevlar, polyester, and polypropylene available as well as the clip spacing are provided as part of the evaluation process. Here we see an example of the tendon system over a liner. No stakes are needed, allowing the integrity of the liner to remain intact. This particular project is a pond at a golf course in Tennessee. They didn't need to protect the entire slope as the water level varies only along the length of the GeoWeb panels. 
and the GeoWeb serves to prevent soil erosion in the area of water level fluctuation. Here's a borax mine in Southern California, again using tendons and tendon clips over a liner. GeoWeb is used for an access ramp into a large containment pond for cleanout operations. So it was placed at a 45 degree angle across and down the slope to create that access ramp. In vegetated solutions, confinement prevents topsoil from washing out during rain events and or with fluctuating water levels. Here's another project. This one is at a waste disposal site in Brazil. You can see on this photo, we have significant erosion after failure of the initial two-dimensional cover system, which was a turf reinforcement mat. Here's the permanent solution, a geomembrane covered by GeoWeb, which is anchored using the tendon system. Many times the dead man pipe can be placed in the same anchor trench as the liner for ease of construction. And one year after the installation, we have a fully vegetated, erosion resistant, vegetated cap in place. This is a highway slope where iron pyrite was exposed during excavation. When exposed to air and moisture, there's a potential for acidic runoff with elevated concentrations of contaminants. Here the slopes were covered with a geomembrane and aggregate filled geoweb was placed over the liner as a protective layer. The slopes were up to one and a half to one and up to 200 feet high. While not a landfill, landfill design principles were definitely used here. And finally, as a project from 1997 that does not involve a geomembrane, but rather preventing erosion of an up to 200 foot high, one and a half to one shale slope at a solid waste transfer station in Jefferson County, Alabama. Other solutions were looked at for riprap, which was too expensive, and building a retaining wall at the bottom of the slope to collect the inevitable erosion, which was deemed to be too much maintenance. Eventually, the solution that was selected included a four ounce non-woven geotextile to provide separation and an in-plane drainage layer, and then three inches of topsoil filled geoweb panels. The system was then hydroceded and an erosion control blanket was installed. While normally hydroceding and using an erosion control blanket is an either or proposition, the idea here was to create a complete system that would eliminate the need for any chance of future maintenance being needed. Here we can see the results uh, two years after the installation in 1999. You can see we have some pretty good vegetation established. Uh, we then went back there in 2012, 15 years after the install, and we have some trees growing on the slope. And again, notice there is uh, no, no erosion whatsoever. And finally, very impressive performance 25 years after the installation in 2022. In summary, every project is different, but the GeoWeb system has a solution that is a right fit for you. The GeoWeb system can be added to road projects to provide a more stable and longer lasting surface course for unpaved areas, which will reduce maintenance and repairs. For paved surfaces, GeoWeb decreases pressure on the subgrade to reduce differential settlement and as well as long-term settlement, which will extend your pavement life. The ability to use low quality aggregate or even sand can save a significant amount of money. Whether you're, you are looking to stabilize your roadway, protect your embankments or manage your stormwater runoff, the GeoWeb system has great flexibility of design to meet your project needs. And it is a complete system solution for ease of installation and peace of mind. 
To reiterate, we do offer free project evaluations for any potential project, regardless of size. And that process will start with a request for project evaluation form, which can be found on our website, prestogeo.com. And here is your free project evaluation button on the band right near the top. Within three business days, but usually faster, we will provide a complete design evaluation, including infill recommendations and anchorage requirements. We will work with you to get you the best design for your project. We send along project specific CSI specs with each evaluation, but if you have the need or desire to create one on your own, we have a spec maker tool available on our website. SpecMaker allows you to create full project specific CSI specs as a Word document in just a few minutes. We deliver quality and over 40 years of expertise, guaranteeing each shipment meets or exceeds our specs. So you can deliver certainty and build with materials you can trust. We have no disclaimers or concerning fine print on our spec sheet. Hopefully we covered all the learning objectives to your satisfaction. If you would like to discuss anything in more detail, you can call me directly and I'll have my contact info up here in a second. We have made it faster and easier for you to obtain your PDH certificates. With our webinar dashboard, you can easily view our library of webinars and download PDH certificates for on-demand webinars completed. Your, your webinar dashboard will keep a record of on-demand webinars along with PDHs earned. Please note that certificates for live webinars such as this one are managed separately from the on-demand webinar dashboard. So you won't find your certificate from today and here, but you will see, receive an email from GoToWebinar within the next two hours containing a download link to obtain your PDH certificate. In two to three days, you will also receive a separate email from Presto Geosystems with more information about accessing the on-demand webinar dashboard with other helpful resources. If you do not receive either of the previously mentioned emails, please check your spam folder. So here's my contact info. If there are any questions that come up later, I do wanna thank you all for attending and remind you that you can send questions to us at any time at in, info at prestogeo.com or directly to me at the email listed here. Go to prestogeo.com for a wealth of information and don't forget to view our YouTube videos found by clicking on the YouTube icon in the upper right-hand corner of our webpage. I'll answer questions next, but if you have questions I don't get to or you think of a question later, you can respond to the follow-up email and we will be happy to answer your questions and help with project recommendations. So with that, we will take a look at the questions. Starting from the beginning. Will slide presentation be available? Um, it's available in the on-demand webinars within a few days. If you do want a hard copy of it, please send me an email directly and uh, I can PDF the uh, slides and send them to you. I have a question here, what is internal junction efficiency? So it's basically just a comparison between the strength of the ultrasonically welded streams compared to the strength of the mechanical junctions, which are created using atrokeys when you join sections together. So ideally you want that junction efficiency to be 100%, meaning that the strength of the welds is equal to the strength of these seams. In regards to the dead man pipe at the top of the slope, assuming the dead man pipe is PVC, should the pipe be filled with sand? Um, no, it is 
not required to fill the dead man pipe with anything. It can just be an empty PVC pipe. Is the GeoWeb material biodegradable to be suitable to be for use in landfills? Um, no, it's meant to be a long, long-term construction solution. So as I mentioned, it won't begin to degrade for over a hundred years. To clarify, this product may be used in lieu of the standard concrete pavement design with reinforcement resting on chairs. Not sure I really understand that question. It meant the GeoWeb can either be used for surface stabilization of unpaved roads or base stabilization below pavements. Is there a limit of, a, of the slope angle for installation? Um, not really, as long as your slope is globally stable, we will be able to design an anchorage system to hold the GeoWeb and the infill on the slope. How are tendons fixed at the bottom of the slope? They are generally just gonna be tied off using one of our Atra tendon clips that are also used on the slope itself. Um, depending on what's going on down at the toe of the slope, we may recommend that you bury it in a short um, one to two foot anchor trench as well. So that looks like all the questions that we have. Got you out of here a little bit early today. Once again, thanks for attending and feel free to reach out with any further questions. Have a good rest of your day.